today we're working on a um, firepower MIG welder. It's the FP90 model. Basically what happened is uh, there was a power surge and this thing was plugged in. Uh, and when I turned it on, it started smoking. It smelled really bad and then pretty much lost all of its power to penetrate metal. So we're going to open it up and fix it today. Okay, so we got these three Phillips head screws. Okay, so this is the choke. The choke in this case is a big inductor wrapped around an iron core that's used to filter out AC currents. This is the transformer. The transformer is two coils of wire around an iron core and it's used to transform the 110 AC from the wall outlet into 30 volts AC. What I suspect has happened is um, the diodes burnt out. Uh, it looks like the diode bridge is up, he up here somewhere, so we're going to keep disassembling. The diode bridge I'm referring to, or rectifier, uses a set of diodes to transform the output of the transformer, which is 30 volts AC, to a DC current that's used to weld. Okay, it looks like we've got four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Phillips head screws. Okay, so this is our diode bridge. We're gonna go in here and we see that these connections have sort of come off and uh, this one kind of looks all burnt up. See, so it's kind of messed up there. Oh. So we're going to replace this diode bridge. Okay, just so we can test the transformer, um, transform output to right here and right here so it should be outputting about 30 volts AC so we're going to switch to voltage AC we're going to plug this in turn it on we're going to measure voltage here and here and we get 31 volts AC so transformer is working correctly going to give you guys a better shot of that when I measure the transformer. About 31 volts AC. Okay, so that tells us that the, the power to the rectifier bridge is correct and that the problem must be the rectifier bridge so that's further evidence that this needs to be replaced. So again, if we look at this wiring diagram, this right here is the rectifier bridge with the four diodes and this right here is the transformer. So the transformer has uh, uh, an input here and here to the rectifier bridge and powers this bridge. Um, and then the bridge then therefore outputs DC to the ground clamp and the torch. So knowing that the power is good at these two connections right here tells us that everything before it is good. So that means that once again that the rectifier bridge is faulty. Okay, so this rectifier has a bolt that goes through here and has a nut attached on this side. So this is a 13 millimeter nut, so we're going to take that off. Next we have um, this connection right here with this um, lock washer on it. This is a 10 millimeter. And then we're just going to put this back on like this so we don't lose it. Next we have this connection right here for the uh, wire motor. Just pull off, it just pulls off like that. Alright, next we have uh, these two screws holding this on. We'll take that off, the Phillips head. And 
Can I get in there? Huh, sound there pretty tight. Let's try this one. That came off. Gotta do it the old fashioned way with this bottom one. There we go. That one was in there tight. This off. Okay, the only thing left holding this on is um, the two connections from the transformer. You know, if I were to do this again, I would take that first nut off. I would do that last. Alright, so don't lose your washer here. Now we have one down here. Got the nut, the washer, and the bolt. Oh, forgot one up here. Forgot this guy up here. Okay, now we can just remove the rectifier. Okay, we got our new rectifier. We're gonna put it in. That's not on the back. There we go. Okay, we're gonna retest this. All right, next we have the connection for the torch onto the negative plate. Okay, now we have this connection that comes from the choke and ultimately goes to the ground clamp that goes to the um, plus plate. Okay, now we need to hook up the two lines from the transformer. This one was in a slightly different spot, so I had to move the wire. Okay, this is the thermal shutoff. On the old one, it went here, but it looks like in this new part, the two holes that are supposed to go in are up here. So, um, we're going to have to move this. I'm going to cut this zip tie. And then See if I can move it up here. All right. Um, can't really fit the other one in there, but that's on secure. I think that'll be okay. Okay, so I put all the covers back on. With just a couple screws. Now it's time to test it out. Seems to be working to me. I'm not the best welder, so go easy on me. But it's working. Thanks for watching.